Forex inflow into Nigeria through IRE window rises by 23% to $1.41 billion. Welcome to Business Daily. I am Yusuf Akogu. We take our business top stories. to have you back quickly we give you highlights of the stock market data as it went down yesterday on the floor of the nigerian stock market the market closed positive indeed, indeed it was a rebound yesterday 1.61 uh 62 trillion uh percent uh, i mean uh after about two or three days of negative trading there and the, uh, the volume of trade 361.197 million value at 5.74 3 billion naira in a day is one of the lowest deal we've had in uh, about in weeks now 5,531 uh, deals of course we look at the gainers on the day indeed we have the likes of Chelaram are uh, topping the gainers table they're gaining about 10 percent to close at 4,940 cover there SOA of course motors also on the uh, gainers table 9.35 percent it, it, it gained on the day to close at 1 naira 717 uh cover of course dango this cement of course uh one of the the driving force there of the positive outlook in the market gaining 9.34 percent to close at 349 naira 90 Cobo quickly the top losers indeed on the day as well. A uh, car PLC also on the losers table, ten percent it lost on the day to close at nine naira and of course eighty cobo academic print, printing press uh, losing nine point three six percent there to close at two naira one three cobo of of course Dangote Sugar also on the losing side today six point six three percent it lost to close at thirty two naira 40 cobo the top traded equities indeed and the likes of uh, fbn holding uh, uh trade, trading about four, 140 million volume of shares followed by fidelity bank 21.6 million volume of shares and of course universal insurance plc traded 18.7 million volume of shares quickly we look at the rest of africa and see how they are doing of course gs in south africa gaining 1.19 percent after uh, the public holiday on wednesday of course the jsc in ghana also gained a uh, closing flat there of course it uh, on on thursday and nairobi, nairobi stock exchange lost 0.69 percent to close downward in the negative territory these are the highlights of the market as it went down on thursday across various trading floor on the continent we'll take a very quick break when we come back we're going to look at the impact of fiscal policy and tax reforms on small businesses in Nigeria. And my guest, Dr. Solomon Edebiri, MON, will join me on the show. Don't go away.
glad to have you back. It's the business daily right here on Trust Television. And we're going into our topic, our topic of discussion for the day. Of course, the impact of fiscal policy and tax reforms on small businesses in Nigeria. Of course, you know, small businesses in the, is the engine of growth of any economy. And in Nigeria, about 97% of the uh, enterprises uh, are made up of small and medium scale businesses. What are the impacts that all these reforms will have on the economy? Have joining me in the studio, Dr. Solomon Edebri is the CEO, Africa Center for Skills Development and Empowerment. He is also a member of the Order of the Niger. Glad to have you on Business Daily. The pleasure. It's Once nice again, to be here. Thank appreciate you. your time now. Let's start this way now. The relationship between, of course, tax reforms and growth of small businesses. Well, it's, it's, it's heavily interlinked. Mm. Heavily interlinked in the sense that the way you tax, for instance, you tax import, you tax products, it has to do with the production value chain. Mm. Uh, it's small businesses in this country, medium scale businesses, most of them rely on importation of goods. Most of them. Mm. And when you talk about the tax reforms, the tax reforms have a lot to do with taxes on goods that you are bringing in. And at the end of the day, also the taxes on your product. So we, 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 we hope that the tax committee, the tax reform committee, will take a broader view and listen to the people, mm. even though I have seen that the committee is uh, made up of uh, diverse uh, 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 people, mm. organizations, government, uh, private sector, and all that. I hope they will take cross take uh, input across board. Mm. Because if you do not look critically at all the factors that affect the businesses of the small scale and middle enterprise businesses, mm. you might as well have them closing down. And when that sector closes down, we have a big problem with the economy because that is responsible for at least between 90 and 95 percent, mm. the drive our industrial uh, uh, you know, sector mm. in this country. So there's going to be a direct effect. And uh, I hope sincerely that as this policy is being reviewed, it's reviewed in favor mm. of the small and medium scale uh, enterprise. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of ways that it can happen. I mean, you can, you look, can put us through that. Yeah, you can look at tax incentives. Mm. You can look at tax incentives. What level of tax incentives are we going to give to these small-scale enterprises? Are we going to say, oh, uh, if you put it at a threshold, if your turnover annually is below 10 million mm. or below 50 million, below 100 million, you, get, you have tax uh, exemption. Mm. Are we going to have support you know, for tax compliance? How do we get these people to, get, to understand clearly that uh, tax compliance it's a major factor in getting to relate with government. How are we going to do that? Are we going to have support? Mm. Are we going to have support for mm. it? That is also another issue. Okay. Are we going to look at the tax procedures, implementation procedures? Mm. What are we going to do about the procedure? How do these people go about this taxation? What procedure are we going to apply? We need to lay a number of things on the table so that at the end of the day, if everything will be simplified for the small and middle scale enterprise. Like it happened in many other countries. It's just like you look at taxation of vehicles. Four cylinder cars, probably next to mm. nothing taxation. Mm. But the high end cars, eight cylinders, you find out the taxes are high. Mm. So what's also going to happen here? What are the big enterprises? We talk of, you know, uh, mega companies. Mm. You can say, yes, yeah, this mega company, this is the rate we tax them. My brother probably looking at 30%, 15 20%, whatever percentage you want. And you can come down on the small and medium scale enterprise and say as much as you can, oh, we're going to take 1%, we're going to take 2%. Mm. So the overhead that they have to pay mm. will be very minimal and they can progress their business. Mm. But don't forget, in second, in, in, uh, that even when you say tax exemption, if you say tax flexibility for the small and medium scale enterprise. You also need to aid their production factors. For instance, if there's no infrastructure, they're taxing them. Mm. They don't have power to work. Mm. They have no roads to move their goods and, uh, across the place. Security is not there. Mm. We need to look at this whole thing in a holistic manner. It's not enough to reform tax. In other cities, we are suffering from 
subsidy removal. If we had looked at it holistically, probably we'll have a phased removal of the subsidy. Mm. Like I mentioned some, some time ago in this studio, we have a phased removal. But however, if we're also going to look at the tax review, we are re covering tax reform, we also need to look at the implementation process over time. Mm. So people will have enough time to adjust into the new, the new system. Mm. When it is just a brittle affair, you just make it a sudden affair, it creates a brittle failure on the part of businesses mm. because it gets it fails without warning. Mm. And you see people packing up. And there's just this current fear already that a lot of small and medium scale businesses are packing up. The fear that over we might lose over 30, 40 percent mm. of the small okay. and medium scale. Even enterprise. with the subsidy removal. With the subsidy removal. Mm. And of course you also know and that factor that is affecting us right now is the devaluation of the Naira. Of course, we're not warned. Mm. People were not warned that the Naira is going to be devalued. Mm. And they task a serious toll, a negative toll, on the small and medium scale uh, enterprises. Mm. And that's a very critical factor. So what I'm saying, if we're going to get on this train to reform tax, we need to have a holistic view mm. on how it is going to impact on the small and medium scale uh, enterprises, enterprises. Yeah. because that is the fab, that's the nucleus mm. of the economy. Of the economy. If Indeed. we don't focus on it, we'll crash the economy. Mm. Right now, it is crashing. The smaller and medium enterprises are crashing. They are going down because the people cannot get raw materials in. The rate is too high. Fuel cost is going up by the day, and there's a fear that fuel cost might even go up again by next week. Mm. If the dollar rate, if the dollar to the Naira rate keep crashing, Naira keep crashing by the minute, by the day, of course, cost of imported commodities are also going to crash, and that has to do with raw material. And don't forget, most of our small and medium enterprise import their raw material. Yeah, if you look, look at take the fashion, uh, the fabric industry into focus, mm. for instance, they import most of their fabrics. Absolutely. Our textile mills are all gone. Mm. They're no longer producing. Absolutely. So if you put, for instance, high tax rate on fabrics, it affects the small-scale business that owns a fashion design studio. Mm. And he's mm. going to put that cost on the end product, Absolutely. on the final and product. Of course, that will be transferred to the and consumer. And it will be transferred to the consumer. Mm. So it can transfer to the customer. So it's a whole holistic thing. So we need to, need to look at it from end to end. If we're looking at, oh, we want to collect tax, we want to collect money. I hear the president say, we have the lowest tax rate. Yes. Globally, yes. one of the lowest. Exactly. And also have probably a very low compliance. But, but, but what we're not even looking at is the productivity rates. Exactly. It's not just enough to talk about exactly. the Exactly, that's exactly one point. Mm. What incentives do we have for production? Mm. What incentives do we have for production? What are we subsidizing in Nigeria to aid our production? Mm. I heard someone the other day mention, oh, Federal so Government paid 30 something billion, whatever, quarter one, to subsidize power. Mm. That's about 120 billion. Mm. a year. For Nigeria, that's next to nothing. Absolutely. So what level are we subsidizing? Can we not subsidize that more and bring the cost of power down for the people and encourage production of power? Offer open-ended licenses to people. Mm. Come in and produce power like we have, the, it has been deregulated mm. and so there is opportunity for people to come into the power business. But create further incentives mm. for them to come in. All these will have effect on the small and medium scale enterprise. Don't forget yourself that big enterprises right now are generating their powers. Yeah, exactly. They're having either true solar. Yes, they like of Dangote. Or yes, or even gas. Mm. People are now having gas transported to them in cylinders, in mm. gas tanks, mm. trucked to their own place. And when they're using, firing their, their gas turbines, and they're producing power. But for you and I, they own a small scale business in probably a 50 to 100 square meter building, mm. 30 square meter building, we can't generate our own power. Absolutely. We rely on the power coming from the grid. That's right. And that is where the discos are charging us. So if the tariff goes up, it affects our production. Mm. So what happens is this. The person, the people that suffer this, that take the beating, are the consumer, are the people. Mm. Mm. They are the poor people. And that is, this poor Nigeria today, 80% to 90% mm. of Nigerians are poor. Mm. And they're the ones taking the beating. So how is this tax reform 
going to focus on the poor Nigerians. Absolutely. Uh, just to put in there, yes. the committee has also promised to, uh, as a way of el el eliminating multiple taxation, they have said that some agencies of government will have to stop collecting tax, like, like customs, NCC, and then 61 other companies. You, don't you think this will, in a way, eliminate multiple taxation on small businesses? It, it, it will, but don't forget, they're talking of federal government agencies. How are we going to harmonize state and local government, local government with federal government? There need to be an alignment. There needs to be a convergence at a point where you say, look, if local government is collecting tax for motorbike riders, federal government cannot take this from the sort of people. What, what tax should local government collect? What tax should state government collect? And what tax should federal government Collect. Collect. Mm. So we need to look at that. So I will hope the committee will critically look at this multiple taxation, which is not only arriving from federal government uh, agencies, but also from state and local government. Mm. If we're taking a look at the tax reform and tax collection, and we are focusing on federal government agency, mm. then the poor majority of the people will still suffer. Because these people are located at the local government level mm. and the state level. They don't even have access to federal government facilities, yes, yes. activities that will lose their charges. Absolutely. So I, I would suggest to the committee that while they try to aggregate this federal government agency, let us look at the state and local government as well and see how we can put all of them in a box with the federal government and say, okay, look, these are the taxes local government can collect. And that tax state will not collect it. Mm. And again, there are also taxes that have resemblance. They, 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 they are similar. Mm. Government just go around, twist the name. But you're collecting the same thing. Mm. So they also need to look at this and say, look, if I say I'm collecting tax for edible materials, and another one is saying I'm collecting tax for materials you can eat. <laughs> If you go to the synonyms of edible, you'll find out that it's the same. It's the same. Mm. Why do we have to do that? Because government says they want to improve on the IGRO. They want to improve on the IGRO and all that. They, have, they can have other means mm. and other ways, even without multiple taxes, to improve on the IGRO. Mm. Then the committee needs to look at that critically. Then we'll be able to say, yes, eliminate multiple taxes. And if you eliminate multiple taxation system, then, we, of course, it will narrow down or limit the level, number of taxes that people pay. You have education tax, you have a, a local content tax, you have this tax. The taxes are so many, many and the people, it's bleeding people off. Mm. Uh, indeed, so many tax bleeding yeah. people off now. Uh, uh, if you are to, a way of advising small businesses operators, how would they know or identify uh, those that are disguising as uh, agent of government, whereas in the, in the real sense of it, they're actually collecting this tax for themselves. It happens mostly at the local government level. Absolutely. It's digitalization. Mm. Digitalization, okay, we're in the, we're the era of uh, digital economy, where internet is used for all things. Mm. A large spectrum of people are now of course, internet friendly and uh, knowledgeable in the area of internet. One may argue that in local government areas, they do not have, a lot of them may not be mm, the, internet. The, the, the uh, infrastructure may uh, not the, be there. Infrastructure mm. be, but there can be a center they can go. You give them the ticket, they must go to that center where there's equipment mm. for them to transfer this payment electronically and you get your receipt generated for you. Mm. That is the only way. I think some states, even as far as the market woman, their payment is now uh, digitalized. Mm. They go there, could maybe go with your POS, they go with, uh, uh, so okay, take your ticket, go to some bank and pay another. I think that's the only way we can avoid these fraudulent tax collectors mm. from going there. That's one. The second way, I mean, that's one of the ways, not the way. The second way mm. is education. There need to be a lot of education. That's what I said earlier, that government must aid the compliance process. Government must aid the compliance process for taxpayers. Mm. If you don't, 
a lot of them act on ignorance and they get duped and they lose revenue. So government must aid their people. So there must be a lot of education, you know, on these people. You have to educate them properly, let them know the processes that should be applied, let them know the procedure, and let them know what you stand to lose, let them know the taxes you are supposed to pay. Yeah. And let there be a contact point you can report anything that is different from exactly what you have, uh, mm. what, what you have been told. Mm. And at the end of the day, the people who act in accordance with the provisions of the law, mm. and they can avoid frosters. Of course, when you avoid frosters, you are avoiding loss of revenue, mm. unnecessary loss of revenue. Indeed, and that will in a way eliminate sharp practices Absolutely. that we have in the sector. Let's look at the issue of tax evasion. Uh, most of the, the corporate mostly are said to belong to the, uh, the upper class, that most of them are vital, they don't pay their taxes. Some, as at when do, some don't even pay at all. Now, what do you think now this new committee can actually do to ensure that uh, the 20 trillion naira gap we have in tax revenue can actually be bridged? Well, I, I, th I think it's simple. The, the tax agencies must work with the banks. Mm. Most of these companies have, like in the oil and, and gas company, mm. whatever business you do, there's a report to the tax office. Mm. You're a contractor. This is how much you have, uh, you have worked. That evidence is in the tax office. If there can be that synergy, there can be that loop between the business empires, mm. the conglomerates, and the tax office, and the banks, it will be difficult to evade tax. Because whatever you do, your money goes to the bank. Mm. That's and right. your source of income, of course, is defined. Your company is registered with the bank. So whatever money that comes into the company is coming from the business you do with the company. Mm. So the bank does. Mm. And then if that is linked to FRS or whatever agency that will handle it, then there's a direct information on what you have generated. And there's a formula established to calculate what tax you can pay. Mm. And there should be an arbitration as well. There should be an arbitration party who, in the event you are not doing the right thing, the company can go and say, look, I'm complaining. I'm not doing the right thing. The, uh, the, the tax officer are not giving me the right taxes to pay. And so this is my... Mm. And then the arbitrator can come Com between mm. them and resolve the issue. Mm. I think if we create that synergy, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to block the, mm. the, 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 the various uh, gaps, mm. close the gaps, mm. block the holes, mm. and plug the holes back and get things right. In 30 seconds now, we're almost out of time now. The uh, FCTA, that's Federal Capital Territory Administration, came up with this issue of pack and pay a policy that is expected to uh, take off very, very soon uh, in FCT. And the process, according to them, is digitalized. And whenever you park your car, this is up to an hour you pay 100 naira. It depends on the number of hours you're parking. So you're going to pay for all of that. Do you think this will in any way boost uh, uh, the revenue of the concern uh, 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 agency? Well, it's, it's not just only going to boost revenue. I think it will create some sanity. And people just dump their vehicles mm. and walk away or park where you're not supposed to park mm. just because you don't want to walk a long distance. distance. Mm. I think... <laughs> Right now, if that happens, then it will boost sanity, it will boost uh, income generation mm. for the people as well. I think the time has come in this country where we should all do things in a, a very much, in a very responsible manner, mm. in an organized manner. So if you park your car in a place and you're, if you're staying more than one hour, mm. and you pay 100 naira, so you learn to do your business quickly and go away. Mm. Rather than you park your vehicle, you are in, drifting. Absolutely. So mm. I thought that will also allow us or give the portal manager our time appropriately. Uh, uh, so I, I do not think there's anything wrong with that. The implementation is the problem. Uh, absolutely. And well, again, just like you said earlier, avoiding sharp practices. Uh, uh, Are individuals going to be collecting that money and put in their pocket? Or is that, it that, that, going to go to government that, that, that should be discouraged. I must thank you, Dr. Solomon Deburis, CEO Africa Center for Skills Development and Empowerment. I must thank you for your time on business. Thank you very day. much. All right, and that's business for today. We'll be back on Monday. I am Yusuf Akogu.